so a lot of my friends and uh, co-workers former co-workers and I know a lot of people traveling to Thailand are kind of curious of what the situation over there is so yesterday uh, May the 5th uh, over in Thailand they had I think 2100 uh, confirmed cases of COVID and um, I think they had 15 deaths and overall I think they're right around uh, almost 7500 uh, confirmed cases of COVID along with um, about 300, a little over 300 and 350 deaths or so. And so let me uh, kind of discuss with you a little bit of what I know. Um, just to uh, be upfront, um, I'm not an expert. I'm not giving advice. I'm just giving you kind of my two cents worth. So um, about uh, about a month ago, um, a lot of my friends that do travel to Thailand regularly, um, they bought their tickets to uh, come to Thailand in October, November, or December. Um, you know, usually when the weather gets bad here in the States or in the UK, people like to go out to Thailand. And so they had, uh, we had a group chat, and um, I would say more than half of them bought tickets for the winter time. And they had asked me if I planned on buying a ticket, and I said no. And uh, they asked me why I didn't. And um, the reason they bought their tickets was uh, a, about a, a little over a month ago, um, Thailand had confirmed that they were reducing the 14-day mand mandatory quarantine down to 10 days for those uh, those individuals, those foreigners who don't who aren't vaccinated and seven days for the ones that can show that they were vaccinated. And so they reduced it from 14 to seven for majority of those uh, individuals who had the shot. And then uh, because of that, uh, uh, because of uh, the rates were going down, um, Thailand decided, hey, we need to hurry up and open back up. I mean, they've been closed for over a year. And they said, hey, we're gonna go ahead and open up places like Phuket, an island where they can kind of control the COVID situation a little bit better um, and get people vaccinated. They said, okay, what we're going to do is open up Phuket uh, sometime July 1st or later. Uh, we'll get uh, all the um, hotel workers, restaurant workers, people who live in the community. Um, uh, we'll get them vaccinated and try to gain uh, some sort of hu herd immunity, right? Trying to get at least 70% of the population um, vaccinated so they can open back up. Because, you know, with GDP of Thailand, uh, foreigners spending and travelers spending approximately, they say, somewhere between 15 and 17% of your GDC uh, through tourism, it was critical to get um, money coming back into the country. And so many of my Thai friends and people that I know around town um, have been struggling, uh, struggling immensely uh, because of the loss of revenue and the chance to earn money by working and uh, and dealing with the tourists that come through Thailand. And Thailand gets a lot of tourists per year. And with them being shut down for a year, that's a long time to be not having revenue. So the Thai government, uh, the Prime Minister uh, Prayut and his cabinet had decided, hey, it's been long enough, the numbers look good, let's go ahead and have a plan put in place to open the country back up, especially first starting off with Phuket, get them under our, our herd immunity, and let's uh, do a kind of a test run with certain certain provinces, uh, ones that are isolated, the ones that really rely on tourism, because anybody who's seen pictures of Phuket and talking to some of my co-workers, former co-workers, and some of my friends who are in Phuket, they said it's basically like a ghost town. A lot of businesses have closed up or, or, uh, or are shut down for the time being. And uh, it's been quite a long time and it's, um, you know, having a dramatic effect on the day-to-day -day, day -day life of the individuals who, you know, it affects. And so uh, once news came out a little over a month ago that um, they were going to go ahead and reduce the quarantine period down to either seven or ten days, depending on if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. And they were going to probably do, uh, eliminate the quarantine period altogether sometime October 1st or a little bit later. Uh, my friends went ahead and booked their tickets. And I would say more than half of them did. And a lot of them, you know, they, they come to me because I've... Um, 
I've worked and lived in Thailand on and off for a number of years. I first started coming to Thailand back all the way back in 2007. Uh, I take regular trips out there, um, sometimes out there working and there for extended periods of time. Uh, plus, with my connections through the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Bangkok, uh, dealing with Americans, uh, dealing with businesses out there, uh, you know, I regularly talk to people and kind of know a lot more of what's going on uh, on the future plans. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, they had asked me, why did I not buy my ticket to Thailand? Well, the problem with Thailand, as much as I love Thailand, is the infrastructure and the structures that are set up in Thailand are not quite as as efficient and well set up like here in the States or in, in Europe or in the UK. Uh, things just happen to move a little bit slower. They make decisions slower. The structures that are set up and the systems that are set up uh, aren't as efficient and work as well in Thailand as they do in some of these other countries. And anybody who has worked and lived in Thailand long enough knows that there's constantly delays and hiccups in these you know, in these decisions that people plan, uh, especially with Prayut, the uh, prime minister and the government uh, cabinet. And so I realized, OK, if the target date is October 1st uh, to possibly open up Thailand with no quarantine period, which is what most Europeans and expats and foreigners and people from the states are looking for, a lot of them have basically come out and stated, hey, I'm not traveling to Thailand unless the quarantine day period is over. You know, if the average foreigner tourist is only getting two to three weeks of vacation, they can't be spending seven to 14 days in quarantine, right? It kind of ruins your vacation. Plus, with the fact that there's so many other places that people can travel to, um, you know, you'll just pick somewhere else where the quarantine day period is uh, non-existent or is not required. Now, you know, uh, on on paper, in theory, um, opening it October 1st sounds great. Uh, we do the trial run in places like Phuket where, you know, starting uh, July 1st, they're going to go ahead and open it up to tourism uh, with no quarantine day period, uh, get everyone vaccinated. I just felt like, hey, based on timeline of events, uh, based on possible next third outbreak, um, I just didn't want to commit to buying a ticket and then having it delayed even further. And so I chose not to buy my ticket. So what has happened now during the first week of May here? Well, this past uh, last week, uh, they went ahead and increased the quarantine day period back to 14 days, whether you're vaccinated or not. Um, now you're required to spend 14 days in a quarantine hotel, uh, state, uh, uh, state structured um, uh, quarantine day period within the list of uh, hotels that you can stay at. Uh, they increased that from the 7 to 10 days to now 14 days, so we're back to uh, square one, basically. Then on top of that, uh, Thailand has um, uh, gone through the third way of infections and deaths. Um, as most of you already know, uh, they were able to keep the COVID situation pretty much in check for the first year. They uh, did a uh, the instituted a lot of structures like Australia did where they closed off the country uh, they had people down on um, you know month and two month uh, month long uh, lockdowns um, they closed up bars restaurants and other places they were really um, diligent in terms of being on a lockdown keeping businesses closed uh, keeping foreigners and tourism tourist individuals away from the country and they had kept their infection rates and their death rates low. Now what happened was uh, last month in April was Songkran, which is the Thai New Year. And for anybody who is Asian or who has uh, lived or uh, understand Thailand knows that uh, Thai New Year is extremely important. Uh, to spend time with loved ones, with family members, with friends, co-workers, for young people that's, uh, you know, dealing with the water festival and dealing with uh, going out and having a good time spraying buckets of water on people. Now, uh, what happened was last month was Songkran, and because they had canceled Songkran last year, I, I bet you anything that there was a lot of pressure on the Thai government and the prime minister to not cancel Songkran for a second year. So they went ahead and allowed Songkran to go on. But, uh, you know, in the southern parts of Bangkok, some of the shrimp uh, fa uh, shrimp, uh, 
stores, um, you know, the fish uh, shrimp markets, uh, the fish markets, uh, a couple other isolated locations in Bangkok had real huge spikes in COVID, uh, which began to spread. Um, and uh, with the song Cran in full swing uh, and with young people uh, mingling amongst each other and people traveling back home to their provinces, uh, there's been daily spikes in COVID along with the strain of uh, the more deadly strain and more infectious strain through Africa and uh, the UK variant uh, has made its way to Thailand. And so with the two strains that are more uh, dangerous, more deadly, uh, more infectious, uh, along with so many Thais and, uh, and the individuals living in Thailand uh, dealing with Songkran and the Thai New Year, uh, daily infectious rates have climbed to, you know, over 2,000 on a daily basis now for quite a few days. And so the Thai government uh, has basically put up the map again, uh, putting different provinces, locations, and regions under lockdown. Uh, if you look at the Thai map, uh, there's a lot of places that are now in the deep red, dark red, uh, the light red. And so uh, they went ahead and forced uh, restaurants and bars to close up back again uh, for one to two weeks. Um, they went ahead and uh, increased the quarantine day period now back to 14 days. Uh, based on the timeline here, we're in May. It's going to really be hard to open up Phuket July 1st or even August 1st now because number one, the infrastructure isn't really set up to vaccinate the 70% or higher percentage of the population in those regions uh, in order to um, basically have the herd immunity and open up uh, for tourism. Then on top of that, with this third wave coming through with the two variants that are more deadly and more... Um, you know, uh, easily, uh, you know, affecting the individuals getting COVID. Um, th the chances of opening back up uh, based on a October timeline for some of these other tourism uh, locations like Chonburi, Bangkok, Koh Samui, uh, even Chiang Mai uh, seems very unlikely. Um, you know, with it being May, June, July, August, September, four months away, it's going to be really hard to shoot for that target date. So I'm really glad that I didn't buy my ticket um, and I'm going to wait it out. Um, I'm probably not going to buy my ticket um, until at least probably two to four weeks before they open, you know, by the time they open up. So I'm going to wait for them to open up. And then I may wait one or two weeks to make sure that everything's good to go. There isn't spikes with the possibility that of them closing back up or reduce, you know, increasing the quarantine or adding the quarantine back in place. I just want to be safe that um, that everything's good to go before I buy and commit to my ticket. And uh, this is the longest time I've ever gone of not being in Thailand. And I definitely want to go back. I want to see my friends. I want to see some of my former co-workers. I want to get a little work done. I want to enjoy the beaches. I want to enjoy the night markets. I want to go to the fresh produce market and the seafood market. I want to enjoy the festivals. I want to go up to Chiang Mai. I want to go down to Phuket and see some of my friends. But uh, I'm just going to have to wait and see how the information comes out and see exactly the timeline of progression in terms of things getting better for it to be realistic that they're going to open back up. Plus, with the way things work in Thailand, things are always delayed and things just don't work as smoothly. And so uh, I'm not going to commit to anything anytime soon. Now, one of the problems I uh, I know that is coming up is uh, is how many Thai individuals they're vaccinating the Thai individuals, and how is that process working? Well, it's been a slow process. It hasn't been very efficient. Uh, they're not getting the Thai individual vaccinated. Uh, they had a problem with getting the vaccinations. Uh, they also were having a problem getting it distributed, getting it to the people. And then I had a ch I've had a lot of talks with my Thai friends out in Thailand. 
And I asked every single one of them, have they been vaccinated? Will they get vaccinated? What is the situation? And more than half of them have come out and flat out told me they're not going to get vaccinated. And then of those individuals who did say they're getting vaccinated or might get vaccinated, I would say half of the ones that said that they'll, they'll get vaccinated or or their actual words were is, I'll probably get vaccinated. But we know that half of those individuals who say that they'll probably get vaccinated, they probably won't even bother getting vaccinated. Whether it's fear, whether they talk to their parents, they talk to mom, they talk to a Thai co-worker or a Thai friend. Uh, those individuals who aren't planning on ever getting the shot will come out and try to convince them, hey, don't get the shot. Now, that's a cultural thing, too. Um, in Thailand, there's a lot of cultural uh, situations that play into the situation where, you know, um, a Thai person can be very sick or they've grown up their whole lives being told, hey, don't take shots, don't take medicine, don't, uh, you know, take all these dr drugs to help your situation. So, I, I've had plenty of co-workers that were Thai. Um, I've had uh, girlfriends that were Thai that um, they would never take any prescribed medication from doctors ever. You know, they were just fearful of that where they had it ingrained in their head. Hey, uh, don't take any medication um, when you get sick. And so no matter how sick they get, and even if they do go see the doctor at the clinic or at the hospital, they'll, you know, the doctor will check them out and they'll prescribe some medication. They still won't take the medication. So I'm really having a hard time believing that Thailand's going to get 70% herd immunity in most provinces because of that fear of getting, taking drugs or taking the vax, uh, you know, taking the vaccination, the shot. And um, maybe in Phuket, since they're trying to be aggressive in getting enough dosages of vaccination, and then because they're the most reliant on tourism um, for their economy, um, they might be able to get the 70% required to get the herd immunity. But uh, I think some of these other places, more rural places, Udon Thani, uh, Loi, um, you know, Khon Ken down south in Pracha Kurikon, um, in Karabi, I'm not sure if they're going to hit the 70% um, target that they're shooting for, for in order to achieve herd immunity. So we'll wait and see on that. Um, I very much is and uh, very much anxious to get back to Thailand. Um, I recently bought a condo there um, during the height of the COVID situation uh, late last year. And I got a smoking deal on a property where somebody couldn't get back over there, needed the money because they lost their job, uh, wasn't getting any sort of, um, you know, enough government help to keep things afloat. So they sold their condo at a huge loss. I'm currently getting it remodeled. And even in that situation, um, because of the lockdown, because of situations out there, um, they actually haven't been able to do much work for the last month in Miwadamoy condo because, number one, some employees went back home for Songkran, uh, the Thai New Year. Some individuals were scared about COVID and stopped working. And then on top of that, they had the lockdown for a week. And then on top of that, uh, some of the, the items I needed, uh, electrical uh, equipment, uh, wiring, AC units, the flooring, uh, those all had problems uh, where, where the contractor had a problem ordering it, having a problem getting it shipped to them, um, huge delays. And so basically there's very little work being done this last month in my condo and that's just basically a you know flow of all the situations occurring uh, not only in Thailand but everywhere around the world right and so there's been those delays and so uh, I'll wait it out um, I'll give you an update as I get additional information uh, making this video today just so that way I don't have to repeat all the things that people have asked me over and over again just shoot a video, give you my little two cents worth. And I said, as I said before in the early part of this video, I'm not giving advice. I'm not an expert. I'm just taking the information I got from my contacts for the U.S. Uh, consulate office in Bangkok. Uh, my 
um, my former managers, my former boss, my coworkers that are still working and living in Thailand, uh, and the information that's uh, out there for the public. But um, that's a little bit of information of what's going on in Thailand. Um, I don't plan, I don't, I, if I had to make a guesstimate, and I say that as a guesstimate, I, I have a hard time believing that Phuket's going to open up uh, July July 1st, June 1st. Um, I have a hard time believing um, that the quarantine day period is completely going to be eliminated by October 1st. Um, I'm hoping that for high season, December, they're going to have some partial opening i'm hoping by january they're fully opened uh but it's a wait and see game um i kind of don't have too much confidence that we're gonna make it in october november i'm keeping my fingers crossed that december and january might be a possibility now for most of us uh most of my friends from the states and from europe and the uk i know that um that any sort of quarant forced quarantine day period in a, in a quarantine hotel um, um, by, you know, uh, by the government instituting uh, a seven day, 10 day, 14 day quarantine. It is basically a no go for them to travel to Thailand. For me, it's been so long since I've been in Thailand. I might buy the bite the bullet and by the time we get to December if they're not open but they're requiring a seven day or a ten day quarantine I'll probably bite the bullet a couple thousand dollars or a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars is not the end of the world for me uh, I typically spend um, you know anywhere from 30 to 90 days out in Thailand per per trip uh, you know, this is assuming I'm not working and living in Thailand on a project. But um, because of that, I can go ahead and uh, and take the time. I can afford the time to do the 7 to 10 day quarantine. Initially, the first year, I was kind of lazy. I just didn't want to do the 14 day quarantine. But now it's been long enough. So I think I'll go ahead and bite the bullet. When we get to December, uh, if they institute back the 7 day or 10 day quarantine, I'll go ahead and do that to get back over there. But uh, that's a little bit of the update. Hopefully this helps and is a little bit informative. And uh, I'll regularly do these videos now because um, so many people have reached out to me asking me uh, what's going on. What are, what are my two cents worth? Why wasn't I willing to buy my airplane ticket uh, with a lot of my other friends who did that? So I'll go ahead and uh, be in touch again soon. Thanks.